I'm John Kaiser at the Metals Investor Forum in Vancouver, January 28th, 2023. I am speaking with CEO Tim Termonde of Eagle Plains Resources. Tim, welcome to Vancouver. Thanks, John. Good to be here. Good to be being interviewed again. With yes. You. Um, the big story that came out this year is that you have figured out how to monetize this royalty portfolio that you have been accumulating over all these years. Can you explain how this is going to work for somebody that's a shareholder like me and when is going to be the cutoff for somebody buying the stock and getting this uh, spin off? Sure, sure. Um, you know, we're a company that's been around for about 30 years, uh, formed in 1992, and we've sort of been accumulating these uh, these royalties like tokens over the years. Um, we've, we've now got to the point where we've got about 25 royalties that are on ground held by other companies that we sold the claims to, we kept the royalties. Some of these companies are big names like Cameco and Denison, ISO, ISO Energy, uh, Skeena Resources, we've got one near SK Creek. Uh, but we just decided that, that you know, they are becoming, they are, they are valuable, but they're sort of hidden in the other noise that Eagle Plains, uh, you know, puts out. We're, we're very busy with exploration. We're seeing in our share price too, that these royalties aren't getting fairly valued in the market. So we decided, uh, as a board to to separate these royalties from Eagle Plains, like we've done with other assets in the past, although this is a different asset. So the first the first step in that was to create a privately held company, which we've done. It's Eagle Royalties. All the royalties are now in the process of being transferred over there. Uh, it's a lot of paper pushing, a lot of legal work to get all this done, but we're we're on track. We then found uh, a group that is willing to finance us on listing. We want to take this company public now, as we have with other companies we've had, other uh, spin-out companies. So we've got Haywood behind uh, behind the financing for us on this. We're going to finance at thirty cents a share. This is an agreed uh, an agreed amount and an agreed price. We're also getting. Uh, as part of this uh, new company, we're getting 42 million shares in the new company. So th of those 42 million shares, roughly 36 million will be pushed out to our shareholders on a one to three basis. Eagle Plains will retain about five and a half million of these shares, and then we will list on the CSE. Uh, as far as your second question, uh, I expect we're, we're, you know, we're still fine tuning the timeline, but I expect the cutoff for buying an Eagle Plains share to, you know, X dividend is is going to be roughly late February, early March, and we expect to be trading by the end of April. Okay, excellent. Uh, I gathered from uh, I was surprised that you have royalty deals on claims that uh, a big company like Cameco, uh, for some reason, has has optioned a property from you. My impression is that what your team does is. They, you, you scout the geology of uh, British Columbia and uh, Saskatchewan and come up with ideas of areas yeah. that are prospective that may have had past activity in them. You monitor the claim status and you assemble a land package. And this is what you try to farm out to companies, generally uh, smaller juniors, but as in the case of the Fisher Project, uh, a major company, yeah. SSR Mining. But this sounds like you also do something else, monitoring uh, for little holes in the yeah. whole claim system. Can, can you elaborate on how yeah. much of your uh, business activity we've, this involves? We've, we've got a couple of people that are constantly researching, constantly monitoring claims. We're watching claim deadlines. We're, we're very aggressive that way. And we've also got a, a fairly large team that when it when it's staking day, there's a time and a, and a set you know, hour where these claims come open and are available for staking. So we've got a, a small army that does this. I'm, I'm a, I help out too. I, I've done quite a bit of the staking myself as well with the other rest of the team. But occasionally, you know, we're looking for a, a big, you know, project scale property, but occasionally we just see these little pieces of jigsaw puzzles in the middle of other land packages that are kind of like the hole in the donut. And so we go for those as well, because we, we can not only sell those to the, the owner of the rest of the donut, uh, but we can keep a royalty on those as well. So usually, the, you know, they're, they're, they're strategic pieces of ground. Um, we're able to get them and we're able to monetize them that way. And so we usually sell the claims for a small amount of money, but more importantly is the royalties. So we've, we've got a few of these in, in the Patterson Lake area of Saskatchewan, which is um, uh, right on trend with the Triple R deposit and the Spitfire and the Arrow deposit, um, so called the Patterson Lake Corridor. We've, we've got a, a few claims in there that are held now by either Denison or Cameco, and they're, they're very, very prospective, in, in my opinion. The, the basin gets deeper there. O over time, drilling will get 
uh, deeper. And I think you know there's a, there's a there's a reasonable potential for finding mineralization on these claims with the NSRs, and those can be worth a lot of money. They can come around. Okay. Our our flagship uh, uh, gold royalty is on the Ormac project that Banyan Gold is working on right now. They they surprised the industry with a four million ounce inferred maiden resource last year. And it just turns out that a, a large portion of that resource are on claims that we have held or, or, or sold years ago, but held the royalty since 1997. Mm -hmm. we've, been, we've been sitting on that royalty for 25 years, had no idea of its value. This just came out of the left field, really. But now it's our flagship royalty, worth a lot. Now, a year ago around this time, uh, Taiga, which was a spin out from Eagle Plains, uh, with the Fisher Project farmed out uh, 80% to SSR, which did vest, and you were in an 80 20 working joint venture. You ended up doing a friendly deal that at the time the, the market wasn't overly thrilled about, but in light of uh, how the rest of 2023 unfolded, uh, how, how are people feeling today? I, yeah, I, I got a little bit of grumbling. Um, you know, myself, I would have liked to have seen a better price. We got 26 and a half cents a share for that. But, uh, uh, you know, they had earned in 80%. So we had a very small minority interest. We were we were definitely the tail to that, uh, you know, to the dog on that one. And uh, looking back, the way the market softened up, the TSX Ventures off 40% right now. So we can assume that a T Taiga would have followed that same trajectory. So, you know, I think uh, looking back now with the timing, it was it was a very good deal in the end. And, and more importantly, um, we received Eagle Plains, not just as shareholders, but Eagle Plains had had a whole bunch of those shares, and we ended up with three and a half million dollars cash in our treasury that we haven't seen in a long time. I mean, and that was fun money, that was exploration money. So we parlayed that money into a hundred percent uh, drill program that we funded, one point two million dollars on the Vulcan project, and came up with some very very interesting results from that drill program that is is certainly going to spawn a lot more work, and it's got my juices flowing. I, I'm I'm very excited about that project. Well, with the shares you're going to get in the royalty spin out that Eagle Plains is going to keep, what resale restrictions will apply to that? Uh, the, the deal we've got structured right now is is Eagle Plains shareholders will get 36 and a half million shares. It'll be one for three. What we've got structured right now is a voluntary escrow by our shareholders. So it will be one third, one third on listing, which is expected to be the end of April. And then uh, another third every four months until the end of the first year. At the end of the first year, all the shares will be free trading. However, what could change that too is, is you know, like the previous spinouts, we're, we're building these to be bought. We're, we want to be acquired. Uh, so if we do get an acquisition sooner than we think, like we, we expect this to be a two or three year process to market it, get the share price up, finance it, find other royalties. But if someone comes in and, and makes an offer for us, those escrow restrictions will disappear right away. So everybody would be free trading as part mm -hmm. of the deal. So that could happen you know, sooner than we expect. We Part of that might not be in our control. Like they're, What's different from Copper Canyon and Taiga, previous successful spinouts we had, is we pretty well only had one buyer um, because it was project specific. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Copper Canyon was managed by Nova Gold. Uh, they were calling all the shots. So they were the only real uh, reasonable uh, acquirer of us. And the same thing with Taiga. Um, SSR earned 80%. They wanted the other 20%. Nobody else out there wants them at 20% of a project like that. So they were the only acquirer. So we're not really in a you know, in an open market situation or an open auction situation, the royalties are much, much different. There are, you know, 10 or 12 big royalty companies that will all have their eye on these royalties. It's, you know, to, to deliver a package of roughly 50 royalties in one tight bundle, I think it's going to be very attractive to another, a bunch of these other companies. And I think we will see a much more uh, pronounced auction effect when the now, time comes. I, I like prospect generator farm out companies, which are occasionally willing to be uh, non-religious about always farming out the next level of drill work. Uh, there are times when, as Andre Goldman said to me in 2004, this this is a keeper as he's holding this piece of rock from Eleanor and that results in a 750 million buyout uh, yeah. down, down the road. And so I call this uh, the, the Andre Goldman moment when a, a prospect generates something says, oh, this, this one we have to spend our own nickel. Now with Vulcan, you have twice done your Andre Gaumont mm -hmm. moment uh, um, several years ago and again last year, and now you're teeing up for an even bigger shot at it. 
Yeah. T t tell us about the history of this Vulcan play and why you are now ready to, to do the type of drilling activity that typically the farming partner does. Yeah, well, you know, it's you can't please everybody in this business, and I've tried over the years, but I've also got a lot of feedback from our own, from our shareholders that they want us to take a shot every now and then. They want us to swing for the fences every now and then, and they're okay if it doesn't work out because, you know, statistically, they don't work out that often. You know, it's one in a thousand to, to take a showing to a mine. But uh, there's that potential for discovery. Um, yeah, Eleanor was a great example of that. You know, the benefits to their shareholders was huge. Uh, so, you know, we do every year, and you've, you know, I've known you for 25 years. We used to not spend our own money religiously, but in the last five or 10 years, we've started saying, okay, we're going to take one project a year. We're going to keep it 100%. We're going to spend our own money, swing for the fences, and take our chances. And what's happened with Vulcan is uh, I've, I've been involved with Vulcan since 1991. So that was uh, 31 years ago. I was a junior geologist right out of school, uh, logging core on that property. And I'm, I'm also a Sullivan junkie. We live in Cranbrook, BC. I can see the Sullivan Hill from my house. Uh, you know, that was one of the biggest mines in the world for 60 years. It, it ran for 100 years and had 500 employees. Um, the in situ metal value for Sullivan is about $40 billion in value. It's an incredibly large deposit. And if you're going to dream, you dream big. Like you might as well go for the big ones, right? And so, this is a project that always stuck in the back of my mind when I was working on it. And, you know, there were always things that nagged me about it that, that we didn't really answer those questions back then. Uh, a, a prominent geophysicist, uh, Sid Visser, worked on it back in the 80s, too, with, when he worked for Cominco. And he said, there's always something about Vulcan. You know, I tried to get them to do more work and they, you know, head office said no. And he said, I've always liked it. And that's always been in the back of my mind, too. And so the... The, the work we did in 91, um, that put 10 years assessment on the claim. So the claims were in good standing until 2002. Um, they did another program in 92 with Ascot that I was involved with. Those claims were in good standing until 2002 and they came open and uh, we were able to stake it. Eagle Plains staked it in 2002. So we've had it for 20 years, but it's something that we would never let go. Um, there were tough times at that period, but because we're a company of geologists, we could go work on it ourselves, keep the claims alive. You know, they shrunk pretty small one time and then expanded again, and that's the way it works. But we've, the program we did in 2000, uh, 20, 2020 was um, when we didn't have a lot of cash, it was right along the road. It was a good target, but uh, it was cheap to do. We, we drilled that program for, uh, I think, about $300,000 or less. The, the, the other potential part of the stratigraphy was up much higher and the, the holes we did this year required a helicopter. And so we were, you know, it was a, a $1.2 million project for that one. And, but because we had the windfall from Tiger, we had a lot of cash in the bank. We said, okay, let's take the higher risk, higher cost. And one of those holes hit some really, really interesting mineralization and alteration that strongly suggests we are right near a vent, a SEDEX vent. And that, that's the holy grail of, of SEDEX exploration is find the vent. And we, you know, the, the mineralogy, the alteration, we, we had Sid Visser come back in um, and do downhole geophysics on our, our whole floor it was. And so he, he did a, a downhole survey, we did a surface loop, and he has identified a very, very a prominent uh, geophysical anomaly about 75 meters from the hole that we drilled and interestingly he's modeled it to be at the exact same depth as the best mineralization we saw in hole four too so it you know hole four might might very well be the thin edge of a wedge and we just got to do more drilling to, to find out where that vent is it's around there somewhere our property is huge so we're very confident that the vent is on our property there's signs of the vent everywhere um, we just have to find it now. Uh, this is last question here. I followed many, many Sullivan two hunts and a lot of them involve very deep and sometimes even directional drilling. Yeah. Uh, in this case, how deep, if the target's there, how deep is it going to be? And, and, uh, and, and the permitting of follow-up delineation holes, if you do get 
confirmation yeah. that you found the, the vent. What does that situation look like? Well, the, the mineralization, the, the start of Sullivan time in hole four was about 330 meters. Okay, um, some of the best mineralization was about 430 meters, but we are seeing signs of a sub basin development down to 560 meters where the hole stopped. We, we planned on only drilling to 400 meters, but we were actually surprised by what we saw in the course. So we kept going, kept going. The, the topography and the stratigraphy in that area is such that the, the, the rocks are dipping at about 60 degrees um, to, down slope of the slope. So as we go down slope, it won't get much deeper. It's it's actually on our side for a change. Which is so, so you thing don't like have one of these problems where the, 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 the zone is likely dipping away no, from you. it doesn't into get away from us. It stays with us. It stay, <laughs> okay. and, and right now, be, where the, we call it the discovery hole was made, uh, that was helicopter access. but. We're only 300 meters from a road there, so it wouldn't take much to, you know, if the deposit, if there is a deposit, and if it's dipping towards the road, we'll be able to, we'll be able to put in more roads, and we'll be able to really bring our cost per meter down as this thing, as this thing develops, as it unfolds. Mm -hmm. And by the time uh, you start drilling, the spin out is likely to have happened. Yeah, which which will be another interesting situation because we we expect the spin out to be completed by late April, as it is right now. We plan on starting uh, Vulcan drilling June 15th. Um, that's pretty well written in stone. That's that's our permit is ready to go. We're ready to go June fifteenth. Mm -hmm. So I think I don't think you're going to see Eagle Plains uh, shares soften up after the spin out either. Number one, we're not getting much value for the royalties now. You can see that if you do the math. And number two, people that buy Eagle Plains right now just to take the you know click the coupon and take the spin co would be crazy to sell their share uh, just when we're about to start drilling Vulcan. Okay. And, Timing's and, great. And 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 based on your experience with with the rock and that there. Uh, uh, to complete your typical hole to maximum 600 meter depth would take how many days or weeks? About two weeks a hole. Okay, so you'll be able to make good progress yeah. there. And we've, Excellent. we're talking to a drilling company right now that will supply us with the initial rig, but we want to know that we can get more rigs this summer if we if we want to expand quickly. We've got enough money to do that. And, uh, you know, there's a relatively short season there. Uh, you could go winter, but it gets a lot more expensive. But if we like what we see right off the bat, we'll probably bring another drill in quickly so we can get, you know, get some momentum going. Excellent. I've been talking with Tim Termundi, CEO of Eagle Plains Resources. Thank you, Tim. Thanks a lot, John.